Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for Wrestling Mayhem Show 466. Hating you like a in the face with bricks. What? Fuck. Wow, that was a that was rough. Greatest that was rough. Anyways, great rap. Ready to get at it and talk some professional wrestling with me on the panel. Uh, back again from his uh, his his domicile. It's Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. Hey everybody. Hey. Back dolphin style. What's a domicile? I don't dolphin know. style from your domicile. <laughs> Dolphin style. What's up? Also from San Antonio, Texas, it's the Wrestle. No wait, I mean it's Eamon Payton. That Eamon too, please. He's the commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> Is this 2010? I had a flashback. <laughs> I had a flashback. Man? Wow. No, it's great. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> from that. and from Poughkeepsie, New York, it's Mad Bike. Hi, I'm just reading how um, the WWF magazine once asked Stephanie McMahon Helmsley if she was a slut. Mm. Yeah, um, the answer might surprise you. That book was sold to ch- that book. That magazine was sold to children. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that was actually mag- the, the WWE magazine for kids. And Everything voice- is sold to children. Yeah. <laughs> and that <laughs> voice is Bobby F. J. Town. Who is giving the children money? <laughs> I guess I don't get an intro this week. <laughs> no, you, you answer over my intro, goddammit. I did? I just want to know who's giving children money. Was that the question? <laughs> I just want everybody to see this Boba Fett statue. That I Gee, was stop it. It's the third show week. in a row. I was awarded this statue on gold this week. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You check us out on Patreon. the Sarlacc pit of a podcast. On Patreon, we had a Get to Know a Mayhemer with Bobby F. J. Town, of course. And uh, you can check out, please, if you enjoy the music, check out uh, our intro exit by is by Basic Sickness. He's at basicsickness.com for some free music and videos and uh, supporting a Pittsburgh guy around here. Uh, you can check us out. We're at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Twitter, all the links for social media, Twitter, Facebook. We've got a great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where there's a ton of conversation. And uh, you can also drop us a line to that email address at... Good times. Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or at 412-206-WMS0 for the hot me- hotline. And we can hear your voice piece. And you can join us here live every Tuesday at uh, 9 p.m. or so at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Dot com and uh and also support us on patreon patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh you can join us just like uh zero and of the wrestling revolution.com and bo diggity Woo! who have been contributing us for so so long and you get that uh he get first that gold, uh, get to know a Mayhemmer with Bobby F. J. Town. We actually just released today the one we did about a month ago with Matt Carlins of Mainstream Matt.blogspot.com. Yay. 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 Yeah. Yay. Get excited, Yay. guys. I'm Jeez. excited about things. What? Wow. Um, and of course, let's get started with our topic of the day. First, first of all, um, you know, it's it, you know, you know, it's a pay per view this weekend. What? What? Is there extreme rules? Bullshit! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> extreme rules is extreme this bullshit? <laughs> extreme bullshit! <laughs> wow! Is that is that? Hey, there is a kiss me your match. Um, <laughs> eat that taco salad. Um, so we're going into <laughs> yeah. extreme rules. We got steel cage match, of course. Seth Rollins, who now can't, also has a banned finishing maneuver apparently for other reasons. We talked about. Anyone that. got two for the price of one? Two for a yeah, price of one. What the fuck one. is this about? I went to a fucking concert last night. Come back and half the moves in the WWE are banned. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys do? Naomi's also not allowed to use her ass anymore. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Wait, is this did they did they expand on that? Is it, are are more 
not allowed to use their moves? I think it's just no. I think no. It's just Seth Rollins. It's officially just Seth Rollins. So, okay. Yeah, the champion can't use his move anymore. Well, it, it makes sense though. It makes sense. Okay, I I get it. Like it, from a safety concern, I get it. My issue is don't give him the fucking move in the first place and let the move get over. Well, it, well, it's not like they saw this coming with all their legal issues currently. Oh, come! This is this isn't like, and I don't think this was a case of anyone really uh, like directly like approaching them and being like, "This move is bad for the children" or whatever. Like, this is a case. This is why I hate certain things like that. Where WWE, like, they had to think that the curb stop would be a risk at some point. And they took that risk, and they were like, you know what, you can use the curb stop. I Maybe. don't think we're thinking that far out here, Amy. I, they I, should be, though. I think they missed an opportunity, though. Like, if you're, if you're going to ban the curb stop, then have Seth Rollins start using the RKO. Because, nah. no, well, no, but I mean, it furthers the feud of Orton, especially if you're going into a match where Seth is saying, hey, guess what? You can't use the RKO, but you know what? And that was, and that's how he should have beat Ziggler last night. He should have used an RKO to beat Ziggler. He said, "You can't use it, Randy, but I can." You know, it's great like impression. That. Thank you. It, that was an interesting impression. Is, is but, but yeah, no. And now the curb stomp is such a. It, it has such a connection to Seth Rollins' character now. You know, he was doing it to Dean Ambrose on cinder blocks and putting out people with the curb stomp and all that stuff. And it was one of his biggest moves. And now he's got like a shitty DDT. Well, just like, like Andy Orton can't use the punt anymore. Yeah, but the the punt was never Randy's finish. True. Randy, Randy's Randy finish still the had the RKO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of an additional one, right? And he'll get another finisher, and and it'll get worked in, and it'll become a thing. And it's unfortunate because I felt like they were doing so many fun things with uh, uh, that move in his arsenal. I mean, it's not like that was always his finishing move or anything like that. But he is the champion, and and I think these decisions do get made because of those reasons. And and no, they're not. This this is not a premeditated thing. This is not thinking something they could have seen out seen out for i mean is there anything what is the official I word they, i think it's something they should have thought of it's a stomp to the top of your head i think vince finally got well, got to see uh, american history x and he's just like nope can't do it anymore oh that's what a curb <laughs> stomp is okay um no no I, I, it's you know you gotta also think there's more than you know more people than you know thinking about these things so, uh, now, so i i read the bars article it, it, what else is there that's the official did wwe say anything officially about the curb stop being canceled they haven't said anything though, no probably, this is all here saying everything and even the bars article is probably mostly speculation like well this this is happening he's the champion of course his move's going to be eliminated and this is a cautionary tale i talked about this this morning on the mayhem minute this is a reactionary thing and it's unfortunate but they're a big company, and they have to answer to a bunch of people. And I'm not going to reiterate all that I've, I said on there, but you're going to have to listen to that in order for that conversation. But right now, we're talking about Extreme Rules, and we do have going into this. I don't think this affects anything. It's a steel cage match, you know, um, and I think they're going to uh, blow by this, and the match is going to be what it's going to be. Uh, what are you expecting from a steel cage match from your new champion and, and Randy Orton? I mean... It's going to be quite interesting because now we don't know what the finish is going to be. So, I mean, Seth Rollins could almost literally beat Randy with anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is that does kind of add a layer to it, I guess. But and I don't know. It's going to be so full of shenanigans with the gatekeeper and the yeah. master. Yeah. And, certainly. And, and the steel cage gives them an excellent way for uh, Seth Rollins to weasel out. Right, and then right. keep his title. You know? But I think the con but that's the thing that also kind of frustrates me is that the whole concept was Randy when picked the cage stipulation to keep all shenanigans out, and it's like there's just as much shenanigans, and there's you know it's I don't know I I, I think the I, match will be really good. I love that I love yeah. that we've dropped two shenanigans in describing this situation as well. It is shenanigans. Uh, oh, 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 LB, what do you think about the shenanigan filled uh, match coming up? shenanigan filled match those are the best kind uh that's not true uh steel cage matches are very boring nowadays and i don't expect much from this i think if anything good comes out of this match it's going to be because of seth rollins and uh somebody's going to hit an rko out of nowhere uh and even though it's inside a steel cage there will still be interference 
Their, their Mania match was, in my opinion, one of my favorite matches for Mania. You know, so they have the capabilities of having a really good match. It's just that there's so much other stuff going on. And I don't know if, I don't know. I've, this, and there's certain aspects I like. I, I'm kind of starting to like the Kane stuff now. Like, I feel after last night, like, the Kane stuff was really, really good. He's starting but, to show personality. Yeah, like, he, when he, he was, like, yeah, when he was, like, screaming at Seth Rollins, like, in the ring, I was like, this is really good. This is the most, like, passion I've seen out of Kane. You know, I, really, I really liked the bit at the end where um, he was kind of grinning a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I this have is... a Kane question. Oh, okay. Do We're... you think they dress him as uh, Sigourney Weaver? What? <laughs> Because he's the gatekeeper. Oh no, Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> I just if, want to make anybody, Obi laugh. If I knew anybody, that would get him. If anything, they're gonna turn him into a giant dog. <laughs> oh man! Uh, oh, I no. think I broke lunchbox. I know. Kane, Kane's I gonna we're come gonna... out uh, at the next <laughs> pay per view in like a big yellow exoskeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Different characters, Gordy Weaver. <laughs> it counts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, God that's Gordy Weaver's music. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to explain the joke to somebody in the studio. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, what, what else? I don't know. What do you do chain after match. that? Who? Russian what? chain match. Russian oh, chain man, match. That would be great. Um, <laughs> You know, I get excited about the idea of a Russian chain match to, until I realize it's just a bull rope match. Yep. With but, they, but they from, said it wasn't, though. With Siberian like, steel. No, they, is- they have, because they, they the part of the promo has been, I'm going to beat you up, and then I'm going to touch all four corners, because well, that's a decisive victory. But the week before that, Michael Cole established that it was like the, um, I think, Bruno San Martino ivan Koloff chain match, which... That's not the rules of it. It's just no. I, I think they changed their minds. Yeah. And this is what I hate about these kind of stipulations. Is that, and this has happened more times than once. The WWE's like, the stipulation's this. Oh no no no! It's actually this. Like, fucking pick it. It's like, Vince McMahon. And- I don't know. Yeah, it's, I think it, I think I think this is. Mind. It gets I to think, the point where you can't blame everything you don't like on Vince. I, no, I don't. I'm not thinking of blaming Vince. I'm blaming. I'm telling Bobby. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Vince. Well, no, I'm t- I mean, really, I'm I'm telling everyone. But, I mean, every time something bad happens, the first thing that most people go to is, oh, well, it's Vince's, it's Vince's That's true. thing. That's you know true. what I mean? I'm sorry. He's not, I mean, yeah, he's he probably has the final say, but he doesn't have the only say. He, that, he, he, he's not, guys. Vince he's is not watch. sitting there checkboxing every segment on a three-hour show, plus another two hours, plus another two hours, uh, of other shows that nobody looks at, you yeah, know. Michael Hayes. He's not doing that. He, there's there's so many cooks in the kitchen, and and they're playing telephone with their announcers. Of course, things are going to get screwed up. Shut up, Riz. What? Shut <laughs> the fuck up, Riz. <laughs> he's not wow, even in here. What are you talking fucking about? Mouth. You see him, see him laughing. He knows what I'm talking about. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. I have no Possible. idea what's happening. Sorg said something. That would make Riz do something bad. Uh, but, uh, uh, Matt Collins wants to explain what makes a chain Russian. Siberian steel, baby. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I was gonna make a terrible joke of uh, it's Russian because they gotta be fast to touch all the four points. Oh, but, hey, man, no! I, 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 it was a terrible hey, joke. Man. I apologize. Oh, you make it. Wasn't, it wasn't as, like, as good as my Ryback joke last night. <laughs> Go and, on. Um, anyways, back to Extreme Rules, but I've lost my page with all the matches. Pre-show, we got a tag match. Again. Yeah, again. That's all right. Not extreme. That's all right. We talked about this, but it's a pre-show, so and it's it gonna rules. be it's gonna be a fun match. And maybe the last last minute one. Uh, we got New Day against uh, Kid and Cesaro. Uh, they, yeah, they, they, Kid this and is Cesaro, gonna be yeah. new new. <laughs> hold that up again, Bobby. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is this Kid is Cesaro. Yeah. I mean, this is the is pre-show st- uh, show stealer, and I think it's uh, it's good. And hey, the pre-show is worth watching with these guys involved. Um, sure, why not? It's just another extension. Does it really matter anymore that they're not on the pay-per-view or they are? They're there at the show. Uh, I'm sure that's what they tell them. <laughs> well, sure no, but 
I'm sure that's what they tell Cesaro every time he's on the priest. Yeah, but it's also like this this month they're pushing the network, right? And the network exclusive pre-show is something that you can't buy on pay-per-view feed. Mm-hmm. Is going to be the tag team match. So now, is that, that is, is, is that I not the was, show? I it was network and YouTube. No, no, the, yeah. the, this isn't this. This is the part of the show that that's actually live on YouTube and everything else. Yeah. Yes, but if you don't have, if you don't sit in front of a computer, if you're just buying pay per view through terrestrial cable, which is what they're trying to avoid, you do not get that pre show. You right. just get a packaged pre show with Byron so Saxon. So don't or, have the internet. You have no access. Well, no, to this. no. But what I'm, what I'm saying is. A lot of people don't have the internet on their televisions. We've already That's forgotten what... about those people, Mike. Let's move on. <laughs> no, they haven't because they no, they haven't. They're not listening to this podcast. Every week, every week, <laughs> they every week they, they don't say, know how to listen to the. Podcast. I still have web TV. <laughs> I'm sorry, every, Mike. Every week they tell people not to pay fifty dollars for it. That's exactly who they're talking to, mm-hmm. and they're trying to get people to the network by saying. Here's an exclusive match with people that you know, not NXT people that you may or may not know, it's, but people that is, you know that you can only see on the network. It's no different than it's no different the back of the day when they're telling me, "Hey, if you want to watch real wrestling, go watch on Monday Night on USA Network." And I'm like, I don't have cable, and got tired of superstars. I mean, in the long run, they're going to leave people behind, and I don't think that's you know, I, I you know, it's as, as far as that goes, and and I don't know. I, I, I think it's very bold. Not bold. Not bold is not the right word. But to, I don't know if the pre-show is like a thing people care about. I, I really don't. I I can tell you that there have been more pre-shows I've cared about than pay-per-views sometimes. This is true. This BLC is true. was on a pre-show. Right. The, the four-way tag team match was on the Mania pre-show and the Andrea Giant Palo Royal. Paper, Mania is different, though. Pay-per-views like, are more... I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I think there's a, a certain group that will flock to see Cesaro and Tyson Kidd and, that, and and want to see the people that tend to get on the pre-show. But then again, that's the people that probably have the internet and know about these guys and are intrigued with those guys. I don't think right. the market's cross. Right, right, exactly. All yeah, right, let's move on to some more of these matches, guys. Big Show and Roman Reigns. That should be on the pre-show. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That Although I gotta say, sma- <laughs> what's you know, their stipulation again? Uh, it's last man standing. Oh. It's last man standing, which could lead to uh, there, there'll be a fun spot on this. There, there'll well, be big a, show use an American car this time. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be but it, it leads to. to I really think. Um, I, I thought that that big show had one of the finer promos of his career over on SmackDown this past week. Mm-hmm. So um, I, it is what it is. It's going to be uh, rebuilding Roman Reigns by being up a monster and you know, big show. I don't, I don't get why WWE thinks that the great idea to make people keen on Roman Reigns now is to put him against the big show again. Something to make I him a badass. But they've done that so much. And but the what else are, are they going to do? And the do? matches are boring, and the crowds have turned on them constantly. Then they'll, they'll do it until it gets worse. It gets worse, and maybe they'll actually just make Reigns turn on the crowd, and maybe that will be fantastic. Who knows? You know they got to figure it out. They're going to keep spitballing this thing. You're not yeah, a booker on the biggest wrestling promotion in the, in the world. You know. I just feel like the, there have been cases where when Roman Reigns gets to wrestle certain people and gets to actually just wrestle and, and you know – compete with somebody that can give him something more mm-hmm. that's knock the big show but it's not that he can give him a lot mm-hmm. like you know there's been cases where i think roman has proven himself and other cases where they've given him big show and kane and these guys and it's just fallen flat and they keep going to the same well and it's just frustrating yeah, roman should be feuding with a guy like sheamus right now mm-hmm. i would love to see that like that i mean i think i feel like that's because Everyone loved Roman's match with Lesnar. The guy who probably has the most similar style to Lesnar would be a guy like Sheamus. I hope that's next. I really do hope that's next. Um, I think having him in a big show feud is just a holding pattern. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. It's just like, well, we don't really have anything to do with you right now. So, and, you know, you're not going to be in a title picture for a little while. So just fight Big Show. Who gives a shit? Big that Show damn, needs something to do. That damn Michael Hayes' fault. Why are we blaming Michael Hayes now? Um, Fucking Michael Hayes. I've transferred my, my Vince McMahon blame to Michael Hayes. You're right, because he's got Hendrix stroke up sexy. there. Doc <laughs> Hendricks. <laughs> Doc <laughs> Hendricks. Not sexy. 
but <laughs> why not both, Bobby? <laughs> or yeah, either. either Speaking or, of Sheamus, we got a kiss me arse match. Uh, uh, that should be on the pre-show with Sheamus and 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 Ziggler. I I, I like the new Sheamus. I like this. I, he's taking on Batista's. I don't like the small guys. I'm a real man uh, angle, and, and we'll see where he goes with that. Um, which means he gets to wrestle guys like Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan that are going to have amazing matches with him. And Neville. They had a, a kick-ass match on SmackDown. They did. Mm-hmm. They absolutely did. Certainly. Um, and also, another big one I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, to get down to one-on-one, Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. If, if, it, if, happens, if it happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What's, what's up? Uh, well, they, they also made very clear on Raw that this match will happen as long as Daniel Bryan is medically clear. Right. He, he legitimately, I think, had a concussion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So and that's what they're saying. That, wasn't that a house show? Uh, that's what they're saying. Took him off of the European tour mm-hmm. was because uh, of the concussion. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that that's worrisome. Damn <laughs> so that then, Michael Hayes. I hope I mean, it happens. James. I hope he's okay because that would that would stink if he if he. <laughs> I, I can't. It's all Michael this. Hayes' fault. Well. So, um, question: If Daniel Bryan can't wrestle, at Extreme Rules. Ah! They uh, added. They I'm was, sorry. Okay, LB is going to be very upset if Daniel Bryan can't. Oh, no, I accidentally opened up my CD tray and it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Why do you still um, have a CD tray? I clicked the wrong. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it startled him. It startled me. It follows. Mike, <laughs> you had a point. <laughs> Okay, Mike. Yep. If if Daniel Bryan can't wrestle in Extreme Rules, how how great would it be if they just put Neville with Barrett and let them wrestle? That'd, That'd be, be great. That'd be great. I thought you were going to see what's going. How is it going to be? You know, how great is it going to be when they add ten more minutes to Big Show and Roman Reigns? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, sorry, no one in the history of ever has ever. Seen. Nobody. I I Nobody. thought somebody would <laughs> have something on that. That's wait. silent. Wait, 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 Bobby, Bobby. Yes. Damn that, Michael Hayes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, Naomi, Nikki Bella. It's going to be a great match. Naomi's freaking awesome. I, regardless mm. of what weird stuff they're doing with her character. I like right her. I, I, I thought the match last time with Brie was really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Naomi's always been one of their better wrestlers. She just she needs a new finish. Mm-hmm. Maybe the curb stuff. Worry about <laughs> Damn that, Michael and Hayes. Also, <laughs> Also added to the card was uh, Luke Harper versus Dean Ambrose in a Chicago street fight. I'm in that for it. Should fun. be very good. That'll be fun. I'm in for it. I'm for it. All right, Extreme Rules is this weekend. We'll all be on the tweeters and everything at our wrestle respective WrestleMania parties or, or sorry, Extreme Rules parties or whatever we're gonna do Extreme this weekend. Parties. Extreme. Extreme. Wow. Extreme. Extreme. Oh, it's dead. It's dead. He lost in two minutes of Fandango last night. Oh, it's uh, so over. Oh, Fandango and, and Curtis Axel. So, so great. So great. He was dancing. He was having a good time. Um, <laughs> so let's take it. Let's take it around and let's talk about. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's talk about ProWrestlingTees.com. You can find out some great designs there by our buddy Alex Cars out in California to set up some stuff for us. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS as I'm doing right now on the computer machine. And uh, you can support this show and picking up the Good Times of Wrestling Mayhem Show.com t shirt. Uh, property of mayhem the logo and while you're there go over pro wrestling tees go go peruse a little bit you can get an old style uh four oh, four horsewomen actually uh t-shirt over here you could go through the t-shirt store the wrestler t-shirt store there's other podcasts on there uh you can yeah it's okay uh, wrestling promotions uh yeah why right uh you got no, cm punk has can... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. CM Punk has his his store on here. Eddie and Vicky Guerrero is uh, a representative, of course. Uh, other guys, uh, friends of the show like DJ Zima, Ion, uh, guys that have been around the area like Anthony Nice, Blue Meanie, Bobby Roode. If you're digging on some Impact Wrestling, I know some of you guys out there are. Don't say anything, Mike. Christopher Daniels has been on the show before. CJ Parker under CJP is a represented. I almost Crime a Nakamura Time. shirt on there. Guys, Nakamura's on there. Crime Time is represented on here. Check it out. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Um, but uh, go check it out. Oh, wait, you can actually get Damn Why I Pick my, Up My Phone. Seven-year streak from date JTG 2007 to 2014. 
you check that out over there prowrestlingtees.com but start at prowrestlingtees.com slash w m s so now uh before we get to the next segment we got a special special thing going on here uh we started this last week with a little bit on this uh we talked about some magazines and of course it's time for predictions from 1988 look into the future from the past with dj lunchbox Zorg, I appreciate that introduction. I appreciate how long it was. <laughs> yeah, I heard some <laughs> rustling. I heard some Fun. rustling over there. And, uh, yeah, I, got I got it. I got it. <clears throat> All right. Where do we leave off? Where do we leave off? Oh, yes. In space. <laughs> yes, uh, is. I believe WrestleMania 14 was going to happen on the International Space Station. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, did we talk about uh, Michael Jackson signing? No. Uh, to the no, we didn't? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. God. Please okay. continue. Okay, let's uh, let's get into that one. Uh, after his 1992 album of Frank Sinatra standards is a complete failure on the charts, following his failed album of heavy metal music, Michael Jackson will forsake the music world for a career in professional wrestling. Oh, jeez. Vince McMahon Jr. will sign the popular. This is not Shane or Sean, Sean McMahon. McMahon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, uh, we'll sign the popular recording star to a 10 year contract that will pour, reportedly pay Jackson 50 million and will be underwritten by Pepsi Cola, a longtime Jackson sponsor. Although his contract will be the largest of all time, Jackson will not be paid to wrestle but to manage. He may seem immensely popular now, but by 1994, Jackson will receive harsh criticism for using a loaded sequin glove to aid his wrestlers. Oh my god, that's so amazing okay who would you guys have had michael mm -hmm. jackson manage in 1990 that's what i was gonna ask too <laughs> mm. what you're bam bam bigelow <laughs> <laughs> Peace uh, for the East, yo. Uh, I, love it. I, I can't explain why vader okay all right i can see that all right blinged out mask i dig it i dig it mm -hmm. uh psycho sid man <laughs> I love these are like the weirdest answers. I know. So serious. I can picture it. I can of picture course it. Psycho said. Psycho Opposites said. attract, Eamon. Mm -hmm. Who would you have? That was Paul Abdul. Uh, I'm a guess. I'm guessing Aldo Montoya. Eamon, <laughs> 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 that's just incredible. Oh man! Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh, I also love. I, I, I feel more shocked by the fact that it also predicted that Michael Jackson would get into heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Although, do a Frank Sinatra cover album. I wouldn't mind hearing Michael Jackson. I want to. I want to. I want to see him uh, manage the natural disasters. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> but with the sequin helmet of the Shockmaster. <laughs> Anyone could make it work. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, these predictions, you know, usually some of them have had a little grain of truth, but that one didn't. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, frustrated by their inability to win another world tag team title, the Road Warriors will split up in 1990 to pursue singles titles. Mm. A feud between Hawk and Animal will erupt over the use of Paul Ellering's managerial services, culminating in a main event at a major NWA card in 1991, either the Great American Bash or Starcade 91, in which the two, the two warriors will battle so violently, they'll cripple each other. <laughs> Neither warrior will ever wrestle again. Good answer, good answer. Wow. Good answer. Um, this is this, the, the uh, answer missing out on draws and uh, yeah, Heidenreich. Titan and Heidenreich. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're um, talking about Heidenreich. Who, who, would, who would get custody of Rocco? Jeez. What, what, year, did, what year did Hawk die? Uh, um, 2000. 2000 something. Something. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Cool. That one was a bummer. Oh, <laughs> now we're all sad. Well, I got something to cheer you up because uh, based on this wrestling magazine stuff, uh, our uh, show note person and tweeter uh, extraordinaire, Mike Allen, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters, sent us this picture of uh, Paul Heyman 
wow, uh, from an old nice. wrestling man. He's got the he's got the telephone, but he's dressed as Uncle Sam. Is they from the 1940s? I do. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, Paul Heyman yes. here. See, uh, Paul Heyman telling you to buy wall bonds. <laughs> so thank you for for bringing that in and anybody else if you have any weird uh, uh magazines please share them I, I, that's that's yeah. tremendous tremendous stuff so anyways um so let's get into our next topic of course tough enough officially announced last night um and i know we have or or, or also as as we could say uh or pick an indie wrestler and uh <laughs> you had a question around this right amen well, my theory was that there were because they implied that there's going to be some some of fan voting that goes into this whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how much the fan voting will actually play. Like, it won't be the final say, I'm assuming. Um, but my theory was that if they're going to do that, if the fan voting is going to have a big role, then it neither needs to be all indie wrestlers or no indie wrestlers, mm-hmm. <laughs> because if it's half and half, then I'm guessing who's going to make it to the to the second half of the show or, or they could all get matt though. crossed yeah it's it, it but but we kind of got the discussion and, and we wanted to save this for the show uh since there are indie wrestlers that you know are, are stimulating trying out for this opportunity uh and we are gonna pick an indie wrestler that we want to see uh hopefully get on top enough can we have a serious answer and a joke answer sure yeah. I, oh, I like that oh too. good <laughs> This just expanded my options. Mm. I my uh well my joke answer is super Oprah. <laughs> I, I would just really enjoy seeing them deal with that. Um, serious answer, uh, uh, ACH. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to go around with the show. Uh, serious answer. Which friend am I gonna pick? Um, you know, you know, somebody that hasn't been around a long time. Oh shit! But has potential. Uh, I'm going to say Andrew Palace. All right. I'd like okay. to see him have a crack at it. Um, more serious answer: Space Monkey. <laughs> Damn it! It feels like it feels like people are getting on the Space Monkey bandwagon, from what I'm hearing. So. Uh, look out for some stuff there. He's actually booked on the next Super Indie IWC Wrestling. Uh, no, uh, Road to Super Indie. Uh, I, oh, God, if he's on Super Indie. Holy crap. Um, anyway, sorry about that. And uh, who, who else has one? I got one. I okay, got two. Okay, Bobby? Uh, joke answer, cheeseburger, Mario H. Uh, legit answer, friend of the show, Dalton Castle. He is for also for Mario super- H. He's super over in ROH right yes, now. Yes, he is. He wants you to check your prostate. <laughs> yes. That's yes, so exactly. weird. He did not answer my Twitter question last night, Aww. by the way. So I should right. I should have done it from my own account. So uh, what about you, Mike? Okay. Um, serious answer, uh, Phoenix. Mm. Okay. okay. I would love to see that. Uh, joke answer, Freight Train. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, I think, seriously, I think Rage they should sprinkle... Like, Free Train would be amazing on that show. <laughs> He's wow. nodding his head and rubbing his smooth belly. <laughs> I, th- I think I think Riz misheard which one was my real, which one was my serious. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, w- I would love to see Phoenix just... I, I just love his matches so much. And mm-hmm. it-, it feels like since the Muertes feud, he hasn't been used that much. Right. So. Right. What about you, Eamon? Uh, the ones that came to my mind. Uh, Bobby, my series... stop it with that action figure. Sorry. He's just floating it past the camera, <laughs> and it's in the Bobby corner of my eye, and it's Boba distracting Fett. me. I want Boba uh, Fett to be on top of Jeez. I'm no, sorry, Eamon. Um, uh, for my serious one, I would go with somebody who I think is very deserving and can do some big things in WWE, and that's Athena, who oh, good. is yeah. immensely yeah. talented and I think deserves yeah. a shot. Uh, my joke, my it's a serious answer, but it's kind of a joke answer. Would be Mia Yim for her just saying oh. "fuck you" to TNA, <laughs> putting me in a putting her in a fucking dollhouse and all this bullshit. Now, fuck that. Yeah, um, Bobby, you gonna watch Impact this week? I saw the promo. Did it freak you out too? Because it freaked uh, me the hell out on YouTube. I had. Did, did you think you were watching a German porn? I, I had confused <laughs> feelings about it. <laughs> I'm kind of with That's you accurate. too. Nope. So accurate. Kind of with you on that. 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I think everybody's gone, right? Uh, so so tough enough coming up. Uh, like, can I they, can I give an honorable bad. mention? Okay. Everybody has one too. Uh, serious answer, RJ City. Oh yeah. Oh so, certainly. How's that guy not had a look? You know. Um. I. It, but uh, LB, you had something. Uh, I, I I thought of this right after I said um, ACH uh, is um, fucking friend of the show uh, facade. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, certainly, certainly. At it. Um, and um, uh, Matt's joke answer is Masquerita Sagrada, who was actually on WWE. <laughs> Masquerita Sagrada was on the premiere episode of Shotgun Saturday Night. Oh jeez. Also, Manchild. Wait, I would, I would love if Tough Enough had like old message from the nineties, just having to re-audition for their spots. Yes. Oh my God, Zoltan! <laughs> Techno Team Two Thousand shows up. They're like, you guys, now we're retro. It'll wow. Be Techno great. Team Two Thousand was one of my favorite tag teams back in the back yeah, in the day. Oh, I still remember them. But I also have a call out to the Mayhemers, and I think everybody should do this. We're doing it. Um, I think. <laughs> With beta frost. I think most of us here have vowed to do this. Um, right just use these two. No, no. <laughs> do it like Mark, Mark Briscoe. But then how is Ring of Honor supposed to make money, Lunchbox? Not I don't fucking care. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, of course, we have to address that. Dalton Castle Ring of Honor's not going to get rich off my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again? <laughs> <laughs> Lube is inexpensive, and it's a nice way to treat yourself. Uh, Sorg? Damn that, Michael Hayes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, moving it along, uh, but no, I want everybody out there. I know, I know, some of you may not be in physical shape to do tough enough. But as we've seen, as most of us are watching the old Tough Enough seasons on WB Network, that'll at least get past week two. You also may not be healthy enough to check your prostate. <laughs> not flexible enough. Yeah. Um, it's but, easier than scratching the middle of your back. <laughs> but I love, I know you guys are creative out there. I know you guys are, uh, you know, at least the guys on the show and the guys that call in and everything are fun on the mic. I want you guys to make a video. It's a lot easier. We're not saying a VHS tape like we did 15 years ago for this show. So why not make a video, share it with us here on the show, your submission to get into Tough Enough. You never know. You could get on the premiere episode of Tough Enough when they do that casting call they'll most likely do, right? Send them a vine. What are the chances? Well, yeah, it's 60 seconds. We, hold on. I want to go Tough Enough. Have you looked at the rules for this? I think this is kind of interesting, actually. Um, as we go in here, you go to wwetoughenough.com and you go to here. Let me, let me pull up over here. What number are we? Number seven. There we go. It's coming over there and we hit on apply now here at the bottom. There's a video, which will be, uh, do express your passion for the WWE. Do shoot the video horizontally. Do you hear that indie wrestlers out there? Yeah, that's very smart. <laughs> do showcase your personality. Do show off your physique okay let's just skip that last part for some of us um don't well, no sorg, sorg yes yes it could also be part of the gimmick if you're showing off your physique the truffle shuffle Dude, is can optional I, can Dude, I show, show us your healthy prostate i have a question could i send a video into tough enough but audition for big brother <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Do you yes. think that will work? I oh. <laughs> just accidentally <laughs> sent them the wrong video. <laughs> Bobby, just say you're auditioning for the diva search. Uh, oh, no. Um, anyways, uh, more, more roles. More roles for you guys to consider. Don't express it using copyrighted music or trademarked logos. Okay. All right. I got you. Don't shoot the video for more than 60 seconds. Don't Fine. showcase other people in your video, so no tag teams, guys. Damn it. And please, Bobby, no nudity, profanity, or vulgarity of any oh, kind. Oh, I'm out. Fuck! I'm out. So, so I would love to see everybody here. Are you guys down with us? Are you going to do a Tough Enough video? Eamon, maybe you can express yourself as a 
as a commentator of, of, of some fashion. I, I was telling people before we started the show, I'm just going to tell them that I have no aspirations to be a wrestler and you can just eliminate me the first round and I can be the next Josh Matthews. That's fine. <laughs> Dude, seriously, let's do that. But I want I want this to be a fact that we have sent videos that people at WWE and maybe USA Network have seen. If you have a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt, that would be appreciated. To I'm wear. auditioning for Big Brother. Uh, I think I would be a perfect contestant because I'm smart. And <laughs> <laughs> I can strategize. And I'd like okay, to... Help. You're a healthy prospect. I, I have a healthy prospect. <laughs> and I just like to add, damn that Michael Hayes. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, so, but no, seriously, I would like to see you guys do this. And please, if you do submit a video to them, please also submit it to us. Good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com. Put it on YouTube, something like that. And uh and I wanna kinda have fun with this, guys. Um, I, I want Bo Diggity to do his in the car. Bo trying. Diggity, yes. <laughs> you show up the guns while he's there, and you can upload it straight up to the site. Oh, this is so happening. Um, and we'll share it. Maybe we'll have a special playlist or something. What is there um, a deadline? Sorry. Where's the deadline for this? I don't see a deadline. I guess it's just kind of up, and they're starting Probably June 23rd. June 23rd. <laughs> sure. I'm going to send mine after. <laughs> no, no, Bobby. Bobby, no. <laughs> so let me know what you think about that. Please check in, and uh, and I hope to see some of you. There will be videos. I think by next week there will be videos. So for us, us starting, and and I'm very excited for this. So let's do it. Let's flood them with the most ridiculous shit they've seen. So, on that note, guys, please check out our friends Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. They're supporting uh, predominantly awesome podcasts with pizza from Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, they, 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 we had a really great time. Dutters, who's been on the show, we posted last week the goal to get to know uh, a Mayhemmer with Dutters and, uh, and how she almost crippled her brother in a, in a fashion. <laughs> uh, but it was her birthday, and she's a Hello Kitty fan. And these guys were so great. They made Hello Kitty, not, not one, but two Hello Kitty pizzas because they didn't like the first attempt because they're perfectionists. They're perfectionists of pizza in Pittsburgh, and they support podcasting, and it's great. Um, and they made, like, a dough doll of Hello Kitty that I thought was tremendous. It dressed it up with little, like, you know, peppers and stuff like that. And they also made, like, another one that was, like, a design Hello Kitty thing. These guys are artists with the dough and the sauce, and it's so, so fantastic. Uh, check them out. They're SliceOnBroadway.com, Slice on Broadway on Facebook and um uh, Instagram and PGH underscore slice on Twitter and let them know you heard about them on the mayhem show. So with that, we'll be right back with the big question and more tough enough talk right after this special message from DJ lunchbox. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is DJ lunchbox talking to you about the wrestling mayhem show. I have a simple question for you. You know, those beds that are like, uh, you know, sometimes you get them in the hospital. Sometimes you get them at home. They're like hospital beds. And you can um, you can hold down a button and just kind of fold them up. You know what I mean? Like the top goes, mm -hmm, so you can watch TV, and the bottom goes, mm -hmm, so your legs feel good. But you don't stop at the comfort level. You just keep going until you're like a V shape. That's what the wrestling mayhem show is like. You listen to that, and it just kind of puts you in this V shape. But spiritually, it makes you feel real good. Like like you know this is weird and different, and you're not used to it but it somehow feels right. Check it out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com at your earliest convenience. Thank you, Papa Lunchbox, for that very enlightening interlude here into the part two of this show. It's time You're for welcome. the big question, of course, and, uh, and also the, the, this big question that I don't know yet. I'm not even sure if LB knows it yet. But you can participate on Twitter. Uh, please follow at Mayhem Show. Use the hashtag WMSBigQuestion. And you will this week have a chance to win RWA Spring Fling 2015, which includes a fan strap match. That's right. There are, uh, I think, 10 fans who had straps at ringside and were allowed to strap the individuals in the match if they went to the floor. Are you scared? Because our cameraman was. Uh, but you'll get that free hashtag WMS big question when you answer this big question, LB. Well, Sorg, we've been talking about Tough Enough a lot here uh, on the show, and Eamon actually almost asked this question earlier, and I'm glad he didn't. 
Um, so he was talking about how uh, it, it's, you know, should be indie wrestlers, you know, people who actually have experience with the business. And um, uh, I'm not so sure. So my question this week would be, is, would you be more interested in watching Tough Enough if it was genuine amateurs, as in not indie wrestlers, or actual indie wrestlers? Whose process do you think would be more interesting? Personally, I would love to see genuine amateurs, people who are just interested and maybe have some kind of charisma and it factor, and you watch them get their asses kicked and train from the ground up. Just fucking regular folk. I think that would be very interesting. Maybe just for a season, but we're only talking about for a season. I think I'm with you for the amateurs because we already have NXT. That's where the people that know what they're doing come through. Right. And we've had like versions of NXT that had the reality show thing, but they were obviously wrestlers and they were already wrestling and it was just them kind of getting their characters over. Um, no, I think the, I think the amateurs and like, this is how tough it actually is for you who thinks you're some jackass that can do this because anybody can do this and comes in and it happens. I think that's uh, the more compelling story, especially for a reality show. Mm-hmm. So. Eamon? Uh, I think that by having all amateurs, it would be more compelling from an aspect of that you have to basically show the process from the ground up of, you know, learning how to bump and then and, and the intricacies that go in with wrestling. Um, for that reason, I think that's why they tend to, to go with more amateurs because it just tells a better story for a reality show. And, and, and like you mentioned, you know, NXT is more, or the performance center, I guess, is a place where, you know, people, more skilled competitors um, are able to just hone their crafts a bit better. Um, not always, but most of the time. Um, I, I, I would pers- personally, I would prefer, I would love to just see indie talents interact with some of the top level uh, WWE guys and see the aspect of how much of that goes into how much of retraining goes into it and how much of, you know, is there any stubbornness that comes with it of, you know, indie wrestlers, you know, thinking they're all that or whatever, maybe would create more drama. Um, but, uh, I, I can see where more amateurs come into, come into play. All right. What about you, Mike? Um, I think as much as I do like, cause like the first season of tough enough, it was mostly a bunch of amateurs that didn't know what they were doing. And that was fun to an extent. But I think to see, like, if they're actually to ta- able to take indie wrestlers, acknowledge their past histories and their experiences in pro wrestling, and then, like, we, like, we always talk about the WWE style. And no one really knows what that is quantifiably. Right. But to be able to take a whole bunch of indie guys and girls and teach them the WWE style, like, like kind of like, I believe we talked a couple weeks ago. Like if, if there was less kayfabe, if kayfabe was completely gone, that's, I think what that kind of show could be because you could have be like, you could tell someone like, Hey, play to the camera or stop talking so much in the match. I can hear you like stuff like that. Like, I think it could be really interesting to see people who have not been on a nationally televised program to kind of be molded to how to play to that smaller audience, like how to play to the cameras as opposed to a gym. Like, I think that would just be interesting. And plus if they have any kind of past interactions with someone like a Cesaro or a Sami Zayn or someone like that, that they could interact with on the show, that makes it even better because that gets you more invested in both characters. Mm-hmm. Take it. What about you, Bobby? I have two words for you guys. A silent rage. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of last season's competitors, or well, the last time they did it, its competitors were amateurs. Um, there's one person left that's working in WWE right now, and that's Cameron. <laughs> Um, I think it should Ugh. be indie oh, wrestlers that makes me mad every because time. I think it would be more compelling. Uh, I think they they would know a little bit more of what they're doing. They could build characters off of that. Um, they probably already have a lot of personality as it is. Um, it, it's made for TV, so that's what I think. 
Excellent. Also joining us, uh, as with Bobby F. J. Town, uh, he is also representing InsertCoinToBegin.com. He is the Riz, and I'm going to figure out what computer he's going to be on over here. Sorry. Uh, but you're here in voice, at least. So what do you think about uh, this question? Uh, if if this was on, like, say, the WWE Network, mm -hmm. I, would, I would see them doing something with just amateur wrestling. Right. The amateur, like, amateurs straight up uh but we are forgetting that this is also the usa network mm -hmm. they like ratings that's why they play like you know law and order 50 times in a row um but Kong Kong. yeah but th this is more like now even with the uh with the voting the fan voting you're going to have to have like an American Idol type thing. And to get those eyes on there, you're not going to have amateurs do this. You need some guys that people do know and people want to see on there. So I think that's why the, the indie guys, for me, would be better off suited for Tough Enough. Mm -hmm. Now, would I be opposed to seeing some guys – that I never saw before. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but it's just to me, one of those things where this is a competition. It's like American Idol. American Idol doesn't really get amateurs. They get, they get stars. They get people who may not have a contract who are independent to other things, but they still sing on that show. Uh, so I think the wrestlers on there should be in, independent and should be looking for that big contract. And, and of course, Silent Rage. <laughs> I, I, or go ahead, Bobby. I was going to say, I think we should pick our, our uh, joke amateur pick and our, our serious amateur pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I pick Sawtooth Willie. <laughs> <laughs> you just call the guy the <laughs> All right, real uh, quick, Bobby, joke pick. Huh? Joke pick. Oh, joke pick. Um, myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no, a Mad Mike. Uh, Stephen Amell from Arrow. Oh wow. Okay. All right. He's well, a huge wrestling fan. He's been calling out Stardust on Twitter. <laughs> what about you, Eamon? Oh fuck. Um. Um. Uh, uh, David Arquette. David, David Arquette, sure. David Arquette. <laughs> All right. He's a world champion. Yeah. Oh, LB, fuck. LB. Will Sasso. Will Sasso. Ah, that's a good one. Okay. And to uh, make the, the the serious pick, the Green Ranger. <laughs> oh, uh, fuck. That can kind of be, be both awesome. picks. That can, about, that can be both picks. Um, get CM Punk. Seth Green. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. He fails in MMA and he's like, all right, all right. Fine. I'll I want to go come on back. your tough enough show. Yeah, like, fine. You got to fucking go through tough enough. Kim all right, all right. right. From the from the chat, uh, Mainstream well, Matt is saying, I think, from, from the chat, Ma Ma uh, Mainstream Matt is saying, I think it would be fun to watch athletes from other sports brought in and tortured by the wrestling school types. Um, Drunk. And, and, <laughs> oh no! Oh, what? No, then we just get Gronk and Mojo. Oh jeez. It'd be 2015 Brojo. Bushwhackers. Brojo. And, and, and uh, Garza is saying, and concerning uh, Tough Enough is about training wrestlers, quote unquote, bringing in people who are already technically tough enough would be boring. Oh, they, tough enough is not necessarily you are trained. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is also I, I you think, are trained I right. Mean, so both I, of them, I, both I, are successful concepts. Yes. It just depends on how you want to garner your show. The closest, like the closest thing I can think of, and yeah, I'm going to sound like an idiot for saying this. It's like comparing like Top Chef to Master Chef. Both are very good shows, but one is more. Hold on, one Master Chef is like for amateur home cooks, and it's supposed to be more of a teaching experience. So, and Top Chef is like people who are in the restaurant business. So you could do, you could do different levels of tough enough here, and just separate the show maybe. That's true. Because I feel like like certain people are they're gonna see see them like I, I'm sure from this they're gonna look at certain people will be like uh, you know what that guy let's just go ahead and give him an NXT contract. So get, I think that's why we're getting the diva search too. You think so? Mm -hmm. They really. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they take videos that are submitted for Tough Enough 
but they really don't think those women will be good for the wrestling po- show, but they call them back for a diva search. But they're so not you're just, somewhat pretty. <laughs> but they're not just getting um, models at this point, too. Yeah. Going okay. off of what Eamon said, WWE really dropped the ball by not having Bill Namott host Hell's Kitchen oh, on WWE <laughs> Network. Oh, jeez. Well, uh, last week we had another question, and uh, that was talking about, uh, what was it? Oh, losing televised matches or winning on the indies, and we had some responses to that via email, actually. Um, we had one from Tony's Beer- Tony C. Beardsley emailed us in. Classy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, I personally think that winning on the indies and losing on televised matches have their advantages. And in, in, uh, in the aspects of the indies, look at someone like Neville. He's in the WWE because of him being seen in a match against Prince Devitt, uh, also known as Finn Balor, of course. Uh, on the other side of things, you have someone like you guys said, like Colin Haney, doing well for himself on the indies because of losing in WWE. It's a very good debate to have because both sides a very valid argument, so thank you for chiming in. Uh, also from Ciro, hey, he's here in the chat, uh, from last week. Uh, he sent us an early email for the big question last week, uh, so uh, so he doesn't forget what his answer was. Is it, is it best to lose on TV when in the Indies? Well, it depends on who you are, I'd say. Top guys like AJ Styles or Jay Briscoe losing on TV wouldn't really help them at all, but nobody, nobody McNobuddinson just being on TV is surely going to help them, even if it's just to share those pics and videos on Facebook. I'd also make an argument if you're having a competitive match with Angle or just losing in 10 seconds against the Ascension, zero out. But you know, again, like like Chris LaRusso, uh, a Ring of Honor guy, said last week, you know, if you make those 10 seconds look good for the Ascension, hey, there's a hot dog and a banana that had a chance last night. <laughs> The banana well, did pretty well. So we, we I also think, got from, from Garza in the chat room. Yes. Uh, he, he's throwing down the gauntlet. $100 says Noel Foley wins a diva search. Wouldn't that be great? I, I Sure. That'd be great as fuck. That, that, that would, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on name value, she'd win. Can't un- wait till Frank Clown wins tough enough. Oh, oh man. Oh. That would be awesome. Oh, no, it wouldn't. That, that would not be awesome. <laughs> It would not be awesome. Wow. That's, 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 that's not even our joke, Bo- Bobby. Oh, hey, Brock Lesnar guy isn't tough enough. Great. Oh, nice. oh no. I he hate totally didn't all, pay him for this position. I all of the paid fans. Get get Undertaker guy in there, too. <laughs> to be fair, if t- if the first couple of episodes were just all of them getting their asses kicked, I'm kind of on board. <laughs> The final two is so kind of be, board. The I'd... final two is so gonna be Brock Lesnar guy versus Sean Cena sucks guy. No, Miz girl. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, I have to give a uh, I have to give an honorable mention to uh, Kyle out there uh, last week or right after the show where uh, he, well he gave he was surprised that we didn't mention for the big question last week John McChesney when he worked for uh, TNA on their Fox Sports show as far as being on TV um, and then it 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 I it. it I think it it developed into a a, a show a, a conversation about grilled cheese. So, uh, but I will mention to him. Thank you for that. But don't ask me how we got from A to D on that one. So, uh, on that note, we do not have any fan mail, uh, but we oh, do yes. have a report on Impact Wrestling. And yes, I did chime in. I, it was in, it was a week where I had a chance to check out the YouTube at least, and um, oh, it looked fine to me, buddy. What's what's going on in Impact there, uh, my um, Well, I mean, this week they had the um, a tag title tournament, mm-hmm. which was fine. Um, would have been even better if I didn't see about 18 tweets right before Impact started and say, "Hey, did you know the Hardys have never been TNA champions?" I'm like, "No, I didn't know that." But thanks for spoiling the entire night of Impact, because. Guess who won the TNA tag titles? The Wolves. No, no, one of them has a broken leg. <laughs> the Wolves. No, the Wolves still won. <laughs> hey, Eddie Edwards wrestled a ladder match in Ring of Honor with a broken arm. Yeah, three-legged Wolves better than what? two Hardys. Bobby, no. Bobby, yeah. no. No, um, but it was interesting. Uh, Josh Matthews had to call the whole show because uh, Taz is gone from TNA. Mm-hmm. Um. So someone, we will we will never hear Rocket Buster again. Someone someone had a good description on Twitter because for those that don't watch the new Impact, it's, the the commentary is not they don't have a commentary table in the building, like it's like in another building, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, and, and, and so someone bad. someone referred to it as Impact Wrestling via Twitch TV. <laughs> <laughs> it, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty accurate. Um, yeah, they it, don't it even they don't like even a... like pretend that it's live either. Post a bop. <laughs> but there, there was something very sad. Go, they should hire them. They should they, <laughs> they should hire Pootie Pie for this stuff. <laughs> um, there there was something very sad that happened on Impact. And um, I just I, – I want to send a message out to friends of the show. See my eye on. Burr, 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 burr. Um, just because the bromance have broken up, do not let them put you between them. It's very sad to choose between friends. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. Zima, it's okay to be friends with both Robbie and Jesse. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's just, I love the bromance sword, and they're 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 gone now. It's very it's very upsetting for me. First EC3 and Spud. Now now the bromance. I I don't know. I don't know anymore. No reason okay. to go on with the uh, the impact. Are you okay, Mike? Are you gonna? No, fine? I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay. I will be okay. Um, and and next week we we have we have a lot of knockouts, which apparently means two knockouts matches. Mm-hmm. Um, should be interesting. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. They're giving knockouts a chance, I guess. So we'll 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 see what's happening. Be a German poem. Yes. What? Wow. Yes. What? We are 18.com. Look it up. <laughs> no, don't. No, no. They don't sponsor. They're not anything. This is like a flashlight well, thing. No, watch those dollhouse. Oh, the, those dollhouse vignettes. It yeah, like they're, they're, they're bit. Commercial. Watch those dollhouse vignettes and then just DVR something at Comedy Central at 3 o'clock in the morning and you'll see the same commercial. Because we was waiting wow. for Chris Harvick to pop up. Yeah. <laughs> at midnight. Ah. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's the impact watch for this week. I had a TNA promo, losing erection. Um, so uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, my poor Chris Hardwick attempt. Uh, so uh, let's let's uh, find out. Let's go around the horn and learn what you learned from wrestling this week. You guys can chime in on the Facebooks. So usually we put this question up every Tuesday before the show, and uh, you can also tweet us a hashtag What Did I Learn From Wrestling uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitters. So what did you learn from wrestling this week, DJ Lunchbox? Michael Jackson missed his calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That, that's it. That's it. <laughs> How about you, Amen? That's all. Uh, I modest mouse puts on a really good show, <laughs> <laughs> mainly because their lighting guy is really good. I like modest mouse. You didn't really have to. Okay, that was during Raw. Sure, Eamon, How about you? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I missed uh, Raw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned that uh, give divas a chance actually means, means give four divas a chance at a time to wrestle and make the rest of the managers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what about you, Mad Mike? Uh, I learned that um, you can't fucking tell JBL anything. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You really can't. JBL will just spoil every goddamn storyline that you have. Um, he spoiled that Bray Wyatt is talking to Ryback. Uh, it, they're, they're paid so much money. He so is paid much so money. much money to get so drunk. I live in Bermuda, Maggle. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Bobby? I live. I learned that JBL lives in Bermuda. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I learned that I'm starting to appreciate not just WWE as far as wrestling goes. I'm like headfirst in the ROH now. I cannot miss it every every weekend. Um, uh, Cedric Alexander versus Michael Elgin was an amazing match. Uh. Dalton Castle and 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 uh, Don, Donovan Dijak, really good match. Uh, even even Andy Dalton getting squashed was awesome. So yeah, yeah. Was awesome. So that's what I learned this week. Mm. Mm. What about you, Riz? I I learned that uh, going on Bobby's thing, 
ROH, I'm excited for this. Uh, oh, yeah, angle. that too. The what? Especially with the the uh, NJW. Uh, uh, New, 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 New Japan and uh, ROH are going to have a thing. Mm-hmm. And I believe on night three or night two, one of the, I forget which one, it's the Bullet Club versus the Kingdom. Oh, tell them about the tag match. Oh, the the, the one with uh, Nakamura and Okada. Nakamura and yep. Okada oh, the rain versus man. the Briscoes. Mm-hmm. I will never cheer for the Briscoes. I'm just going it out there. But that match is going to be off the chain. You'll never cheer for the Briscoes? Not really. Why? Uh, Not really. Well, one of them you can probably cheer for. No, no, no. But Wait, is this because of the prostate. controversy last year? <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they they don't. don't. You specifically, have they... a doctor check your prostate, not another man. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The Briscoe brothers are world. not actually well, brothers. <laughs> well, uh, wow. <laughs> well, from the chat room, uh, Wheels learned that Nick S. Bon Taylor does an awesome running man to Uptown Funk. Yeah, they I'm come very, out the they I'm... come out the Uptown Funk. Uh, Nick S. Bon Taylor, Shane Andrews, and uh, Jesse Jesse Bell Smothers. And so you're here three times plus <clears throat> during the night, depending on how many they won. And uh, uh, at least twice, well, both matches that their group won, uh, they were uh, it turned into a music video at the entrance. Uh, <laughs> To, to them taunting a guy that we affectionately call Mario at the RWA shows. Um, I think I'm going to put those out by themselves on YouTube, by the way, uh, <laughs> after I was editing it today. So that's from Spring Fling. Does he look like it. Mario? Yes, he looks like Mario. Like, I'm really confused. But he's very angry. This week. He's he very angry. Is, um, he, is he wearing red overalls? Bob, or, uh, Riz, we'll, we'll discuss this later. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm very interested. Garza learned that Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling shows work better than blank? Viagra. Oh. Um, oh. What? 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 Yeah. Oh, what? It gave him a boner. <laughs> I... Oh. oh. Okay. I'm smart. Oh, and of course, okay. we also have from Facebook a lot of responses to what you learned from wrestling this week, including as I pulled this up on my uh, machine cool over out, here. Sure. Steve <laughs> says the authority should have recruited and made El Torito the champion. Yep. Yeah. That was a pretty good line last night, by the way. Corporate El Torito. Oh. Corporate El Torito. El Torito yes. US title. Fantastic. Also, some, uh, we had a lot of them on our Wrestling Man Show Facebook group. Oh, no. Bubba Fett. Gabriel learned the, the Bobby stop it. The Sorry, w, I almost dropped them. Gabriel learned the WWE is way too cautious of when banning moves. A basic back bump can give you a concussion. This no. is true. I discussed this with a certain pro wrestler of note this Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, it takes away from a wrestler's creativity. That's true too. That's true too. Uh, Kyle says Taz can be unemployed and still get paid more than working for TNA. Well, apparently some people not getting paid recently at TNA. Um, and by the way, check out my Mayhem Minute where I defend Taz. Why? Why? Listen to the Mayhem Minute and find out. And let uh, me know your thoughts. <laughs> apparently you guys don't listen to it because the stuff nope. I say on there, I know you'd have something to say I, about I, it. I don't pay attention to a lot of things that Taz <clears throat> has to do with. Mm. Damn that Michael Hayes. Daniel says no, that it's not Michael Hayes' fault there. Uh, Daniel learned that RKOs can still come out of nowhere. I, I enjoyed that so much last night. And somebody's like, "Oh, it's like t- it's like Stone Cold used to day used to do back in the day." Yes, and it still works. Used to date. Um, Kiko is her name. Kiko, 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 Kiko. Keiko. Um, I don't know. I just see her on the Facebook. Keiko. I've never had to say it before. Keiko. It's Keiko. Sorry, like the like O'Brien's wife on DS9. Say it like her. Keiko. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the story I'm... <laughs> That uh, Carl Anderson's. She learned that Carl Anderson's gun stuns can also come from out of nowhere. What? It's basically an RKO, but he calls it the gun stun. Oh, okay. Uh, Kyle also learned the curb stop is bands really came out of nowhere. <laughs> That's true. That's true, too. So thank you. Everybody participated and uh, responded throughout the day on what you learned and throughout the week on so many things going on here in the world of wrestling. And you can please follow us uh, at Sorgatron. On, um, no, that's me. 
That's me. At Mayhem Show. Please let us know your thoughts. 412-206-WMS0. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, So WrestlingMayhemShow.com for everything going on here. You can uh, subscribe to us, follow us on social media, all the links there, and please review. If you're, I, I, I said if anybody reviews us on iTunes and you entertain me, I'm going to give you something special. Oh. If you if you review, please also email us at good times wrestling com so we can find it. It's a little hard to kind of get in there, so let us know what, what's going on there. <laughs> Gotta sure. use two fingers, sword. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 going to be sending out requests for sponsors this week. Super beta prostate. What 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 better that that? So I mean, I don't have to read the prostate ad if that's what we get. Get the old castle to read. <laughs> um. That that broke sword, everybody. Uh, what else do we do at this point? I don't. Uh, I'm I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I'm done. Mayhem. LB, no. LB, close the show. Uh, you uh, check, check me out uh, on Twitter at DJ Lunchbox. You can also follow us at Panel Riot at Intern Stan. Internet Heartthrob Intern Stan is now on Twitter as well. Uh, listen to us, PanelRiot.com, and uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening, True Believers, and hopefully tune in next week when I will thought of a catchphrase. Wait, just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.